to our numerous viewers all over the world. We say welcome to another action-packed edition of Sports Tonight on Channels Television. We're broadcasting live from our sports center in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Austin Okonakman on the show tonight. We'll give you updates from the camp of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. They will take on the Libyan national team tomorrow at the Aquaibom International Stadium uh, in an AFCON qualifying match. Gernot Raw, the technical advisor of the team, says... They are going to approach that game with all seriousness. In his words, we will not underrate Libya, that they will not check, check this, the FIFA ranking. They won't say, oh, because they are Libya, and so they go and be complacent. No, they say they want to give that all uh, the seriousness it can get so that they can win that one and win the next match on Tuesday and hopefully win in South Africa and qualify for the African Cup of Nations. Football will get our attention tonight on the program. We still have our eyes fixed. That's what is going on right there in Buenos Aires. Uh, the Youth Olympic Games. Yes, we've been talking about Team Nigeria. 17 young athletes are representing the country. They have the country on their shoulder. Such huge responsibility and they're doing just fine. Yes, we haven't started counting the medals, but I tell you they are doing just fine. Because if you have kids at that level representing the country, then you know that the future looks good for uh, the various sports that they are representing. We've been giving serious attention to golf. We showed you George Auerbaugh. We told you uh, updates coming from Jordan um, Thompson also. Singles events concluded. Tomorrow they will begin the team event. Georgia and Jordan will team up. They've been friends for quite some time, so they know themselves. Georgia is 17, Jordan is 15. I love telling this story because uh, Jordan started playing golf at just five. At age five, he's been playing golf. He's 15 now, 10 years experience of playing golf. That's what we're saying that it's very important we catch them young. We'll talk about the Youth Olympic Games tonight on the program and, of course, uh, let you know what's going on also at different um, regions will be busy with the AFCON qualifiers. We'll bring you the fixtures, lobby stars. A virtue of what happened with the league not ending, they're going to represent Nigeria in the CAF Champions League. They have already started preparations, yes, because there's no more time uh, for uh, play. It's the CAF Champions League. They need to be ready, and they are doing just that. We'll catch up with the team, find out they're getting ready uh, for that big one. Yesterday, I told you uh, that the final shortlist for the nominees for the 2018 Nigerian Sports Award has been done, but because of the discussion, the Super Eagles discussion stretched, and we couldn't take it. We'll tell you uh, those nominees tonight on the program, and if you love tennis, walk with us. We're going to play some tennis at the Shanghai Masters Sports tonight on your award-winning sports-loving channel television. Let's bring you into the discussion. I want you to talk to us on the show tonight using the hashtag AFCON qualifiers. That will get our attention big time, uh, particularly that match between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and the Libyan national team. What's your take? You guys have started talking from last night. Let's keep that conversation going on Twitter. Channels underscore sports, Facebook channels, I feel sports, or send an email sports tonight at channels tv.com. We are also getting messages. You guys are saying well done to the young athletes representing the country right there in Argentina. Um, let's keep that conversation also going with the hashtag youth Olympic Games. Uh, ask questions, write down names, monitor their progress. You never know. We might just be looking at the next set of athletes that will get us talking when you talk about sports in Nigeria. Badminton will also get our attention. What are they doing this time around? I'll tell you. Walk with us on this journey. And of course, I told you we will be uh, talking about what's going down at the Shanghai Masters. Hopefully, we'll be able to connect uh, to the camp of the Super Eagles, get either the media officer, Tony Bito, or, or a player. Let's just feel uh, the mood in camp ahead of that crucial match tomorrow and how they're going to approach it. We deserve to, to know. Uh, we will try to do just that on the show tonight. All our top stories can be viewed on our website, channelstv.com, and on YouTube for slash channels web. Log on to m.channelstv.com to download the Channels TV app for any of those devices that you can see right there, your iPad, your iPhone, your BlackBerry, your iOS, your Windows phones, and your Android phones. We are also monitoring what's going on at the Lagos Open Tennis Championship. We love the fact that it has been upgraded uh, into two different futures, and foreign players are here, and they're saying good things about the competition. Tomorrow, we're going to have the final. Can Jumbi 
do what he did in the first leg of Futures 4, or Yad Papali from India. Uh, some matches are still being played before we came on air, but when we get those updates, we'll tell you the finalists for the 2018 Lagos Open. It's tennis, and we love the fact that it is being played right here in Lagos. It's first tonight on Channel's Television. Let's do this now. Alfred Okuligwe is with us in the studio. Alfred, it's good to have you on Sports Tonight. Delighted to be here, Austin. And, uh, very mm. good evening to you and, of course, to the viewer out there. Fantastic. Alfred, I was talking about the Youth Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. We've been monitoring it. And I'm sure you know Georgia Obo because our parents have done so much for our golf and a lot of persons now know how they're talking about her. And, hey, she's just 15, smashing records. She's also there with Jordan Thompson. Jordan is just 15 and also doing well. Yes, they've, they've not been winning. But Alfred, once again, we need to let the viewers know and administrators that at this stage, it's not about winning, it's about gaining experience. It's not about winning, like you said, Austin, and uh, that's something that we should ring the heads of um, uh, those who really manage the sport. Uh, for, uh, just a typical example of um, tennis, uh, the features taking place in Nigeria, mm -hmm. the Lagos Open. You find young athletes, 15, 16, 17, yeah. traveling the world with, with their parents. <laughs> with uh, somebody with a mentor, with somebody, a guardian, yeah. somebody who is taking care of these athletes. They might not be at the top of the game now, but this process, you know, this going through these tournaments and these events around the world kind of shapes what they're going to be uh, in future. And that is what it's all about. It's all about development, especially an individual sport like golf. It's not something that you just come on the scene and uh, it takes perseverance, it takes practice, it takes, um, you know, really just keep, you know, keep keeping on yeah. for you to get to the top of your game. And That's so right. it's, it's, it's good that um, we have her as an ambassador. And um, at that age, mm. the possibilities are endless. Yeah. The possibilities are just endless at that. And, and it's something that um, we just have to, to, to keep on. Let's take it to another angle. That is Jordan Thompson, by the way, uh, about to tee off uh, when the game started in Argentina on day one. I didn't post a good result. He played 101 shots, but it's not bothered. Jordan has been playing golf since five. When I spoke to his dad, he said that the interest grew because the school that he attends in the UK, they take golf seriously. Alfred, he put school into the mix again. That would be saying that we must take school sports very seriously in this part of the world. From Nigeria, school sports, it's not just saying that school Jordan sports is the secret of the success that we have in any sports whatsoever. Mm. It's just because it's the school system that you have a lot of, the numbers are there. The, the atmosphere, the atmosphere is right. The and that's where you can right. build the interest. That is where you can build the interest. Apart from, you know, combining with education, it just tells you that if you have your feet on the ground and you're doing this consistently, this is, I mean, it's a question of um, action and reaction, or action or outcome. This is where you, you get to. And I think, um, Teachers or games masters are not just, they, these guys are not just um, there to just teach you this thing. Yeah. They are mentors. They are there to guide you. Yeah. They are mentors. They are there to guide you. Yeah. They are there to tell you where to go. And for somebody who is 15, played, had experience of 10 years in the sport. I mean, um, it can't come bigger than um, the uh, Tiger Woods. And we know how it all came about. The yeah. father picked interest and from a very young age he's been mm. playing the sport and mm. uh, no wonder he's at the top of, um, of, of what uh, when it comes to golf or to that, that game. And so, I mean, whatever we do, whether it is rugby, whether it is cricket, whether it is uh, badminton, whatever sport, athletics, yeah. if it is, if we don't find a way of you know, having a viable school sport system. That's the word. And that's, right. the other day, uh, for my Somewhere I was at an event when Mary Onyali was lamenting mm. that for somebody like her, she's a product of school sports. Yeah. And she did look that? around now, nothing is nothing. happening. Nothing, nothing absolutely nothing mm. is happening. Um, Georgia is in the United States of America. Jordan is in London. Look at them. Looking so responsible, you know, playing golf. And right now they're representing Nigeria at the Youth Olympics. But as far as a viable school sports system, that says, look, when he continued playing, he went to a school that they take golf seriously. Also, they go for competitions. And that's how his interest has been sustained. And now he's playing at the Youth Olympics. So you never can tell... Tomorrow he can go to the PGA Tour. He can begin to play different. 
Look, Georgia has played the ladies' European tour, and she's the youngest African player to have ever done that. And that's why we keep talking about it. Uh, we've said de emphasize winning. Don't say, oh, did they win? No, nah, it's not about them winning. It's about you seeing the signs that the future looks good. So tomorrow, you've seen both of them in their practice session, they will be serious. Um, playing golf again, Jordan Thompson and Georgia Obo, they would team up in the team events at the golf uh, for golf at the Youth Olympics. It takes three formats. I'll tell you the format. The first format is called the alternate shot. So Georgia might start, take the first hole, and then um, Thompson will follow, and in the end they will put the results together. The second format is called the four sums. The both of them will play together, but it is the best score. That will be retained and then the third format is the singles individual scores will come together and then look what does this also say at that point now at not just for georgia and jordan the youth that are at this olympics they will learn a vital sports value called teamwork no it's um it's the center of uh teamwork is uh, something at the center of um everything we do in sports because mm. whether you like it or not even for individual sports for individual sports, there is a team behind whatever you do. There is the coach, there is the physio, there is somebody that takes care of nutrition, there's somebody that takes the management team that mm -hmm. takes care of um, the business side of uh, whatever. So it's always, a, there's always a team to every champion that you see out there. Nobody does it alone because at the end of the day, it's an aggregation of whatever it is that you guys put in that you get out in terms of uh, results. And so, um, you can't at this age perhaps maybe the biggest ever sport or the biggest event they can take part is in the, is the olympics at this age yeah. the youth olympics and, yeah. and they do already they and what that. what it means is mm. that if you can make it at this age, that means with your peers you have the uh, capacity if you work on it friend. if you have the you, mm. you know, work on it you mm. can always get mm. to the main olympics mm. and if you um within this circle yeah and you have your you keep your feet on the ground work really hard i'm i'm sure that um at the end of the ultimately um yeah. what did they say about aiming for the skies uh, aim for the stars even if yeah. you miss somehow you won't land on the ground you land on the roof of that's somebody that's what it is and that's what you get when you catch them young when you give attention to sports at the grassroots put development to it and you will see the reason why you should follow it through um the story of georgia but i'm not going to leave it because Someday she will get the world talking. So walk with us on this story of Georgia Obo and Jordan Thompson. At 17, all the vital experience, experiences are already in the bag for Georgia. At 15, Jordan is also looking promising. And it's so sweet. It's sweeter because they are representing Nigeria. So as a country, we should support them. The Federation, the Golf Federation, I'm sure they are also monitoring their progress. And not just golf. We talked about table tennis also. Esther Oriba, Michelle, and Aziz Sholanke crashed out. Couldn't make it to the preliminary round. And we said, no, don't blame them. Ask Federation, what did you do? How many events? Alfred, I can remember there was one time we were saying here that there were three major African youth competitions going on, and these kids couldn't go. The last one was sometime last year. <sighs> The uh, World Junior Athletics Championship, Mombasa, Kenya. We couldn't go for it. Mombasa, uh -huh. Kenya. We couldn't, we couldn't make it. Uh, so we need to identify these problems. It, it, you, yes. Have you just stopped to wonder? Sometimes you have an African, African championship in whatever event, mm. and you look at those who are attending the events. Even if Nigeria doesn't make that, you look at the Egyptians are there, the Tunisians are there, the Algerians. The uh, Tuglis, uh, Ghanaians, they are they there. Will be, and they, they, they are taking part every day. Badminton, yeah. uh, Taekwondo the other day was talking about Senegalese um, to, and Ivorian uh, Taekwondo players being rated in the world. You know why? Yeah. Because they go to international tournaments. Thank you. Simple as that. Now, the, 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 the Taekwondo people, they are waiting for the Korea, uh, the Korea, Korea Ambassador's Cup in Nigeria to so as to see how many I'm Nigerian afraid. athletes will push in. The moment they get in there, it all waits for the next event that will come up in Nigeria, which yes. will be next year. Yeah. Meanwhile, these guys leave Lagos, uh, leave Abuja, whatever the event is happening. Mm. The next day, they are in the U.S. The day after, they are in Egypt. Before you know it, they are well placed. And when it comes to qualify for major, major events, you, you look at the ranking, it's okay, they get up, they get up automatic qualification. So why are you quick to say, oh, that athlete, what did she do? What did he do? <laughs> Ask officials, administrators, what are they doing? So we'll continue to monitor the Youth Olympic Games, but we'll go on this break. When we come back, 
We're getting ready for the National Badminton Championships, the Lagos edition. I'll give you more information. Don't go anywhere. Stay.